Hello and welcome to yet another YouTube video here on this channel. Today we are doing uh, or talking about something that uh, has been a trend in the PKM space for at least a year and in the note taking space and PKM space and that is something called object based note taking and in today's video I'm going to try to give you a guide on object based note taking and why people love it. Uh, I'm also going to show you some of the applications and some of the upcoming applications more on that later and lastly I am actually going to uh, talk about one of the major issues with this kind of note-taking so this is any type this is one of the object-based note-taking applications and I'm picking this one to demonstrate a lot of things because this is the one I know the most about this is actually the one I have learned to use and what basically object-based applications are is if we go into uh, my object types is basically that instead of just taking notes, your notes are actually different things. So a note about an application, a note about Tana or any type is actually an app. I'm writing about the app, so it should be an app. Uh, a personal thought is a personal thought, a movie is a movie, a tweet is a tweet, and all of these different object types should uh, actually function a little bit different because there is a huge difference between a podcast and an article, even though both of them in, for example, para would be called resources, there is a difference between them and they will probably have different templates. Um, and that is one of the reasons I've done it like this in any type because the templates often in these object based note taking applications rely on uh, the object type. So I have one for podcast, one for article. Uh, a human should be a human, uh, like a note should be a note, a collection inside of any type is a collection, a project is a project. And for a lot of people, this makes much more sense uh, because uh, previously we have thought of things like in folders but our brains do not necessarily work in folders uh, they more so work in objects and relationships between those objects which is something a lot of these object-based note-taking applications do they offer two things they offer object types and they offer backlinking so you can relink different things together um, any type takes it one step forward with adding like relations. So you can actually add relationships between one object to another. If you jump into my graph view, I think we can see some of these like related project or area uh, is, is a relation, app is a relation, uh, related social media project is a relation. And all of this is really, really customizable. But the point being that our brains often think in objects and for a lot of people, I'm not saying for everyone, but the major reason for why this trend has taken off so much is simply because um, simply because the uh, application, uh, the applications with object base or the object object based note taking applications, that was really hard to say. The object based note taking applications makes sense to people. It is much easier for them to organize. And I've read a lot of Medium articles about people actually uh, talking about how object-based note-taking applications actually made them spend less time uh, organizing and more time actually working, which is what we all are searching for in this object-based or in this PKM space, in the note-taking space we are all uh, looking for a way to take notes and for us to be able to find the right notes without having to spend too much time inside of each one of these applications. Uh, and that is what object-based note-taking does for a lot of people. Uh, and it is really fun to get into. And once you understand it, uh, it actually uh, works quite well. I haven't personally been able to really uh, fall in love with object-based note-taking apps, but that is because I'm looking for more visual applications uh, and none of these 
are visual applications, at least not yet. My guess is that if this trend continues, we will get a visual object-based note-taking app. But as of right now, uh, I'm not currently using any one of them as my uh, personal note-taking app. Uh, I am using AnyType quite regularly to play around with because I think the application is really good and really fun to use but I'm not necessarily using it for productivity. I'm also testing out shared spaces inside of any type. So as I said earlier, this is the application I'm most familiar with. And to show you how this works, uh, this is sort of like Notion and Obsidian blended together. I won't go too deep into the applications because I've done videos on all of them before. But uh, basically the way this works is that you have your object types, you have the ability to backlink things, you have probably the most beautiful graph view I've seen inside of any note-taking app, and you also have something uh, called databases, uh, which if you have used Notion, you might be familiar with. You have two types of uh, two types of databases inside of any type. You have something called uh, collections and you have something called sets. Collections are your regular databases. So think of these as folders for a lot of different object types. This is good for, for example, your resources where you want to have books, articles, personal thoughts, tweets, podcasts, and so on. What's cool about the views inside of any types databases is that you can have a graph view. You can link different things together inside of the database and look at them at a graph view, which is amazing if you're into something like Zettel custom note-taking. That is basically any type for you. The other thing is sets, which are, you can look at them as like a search queries for specific object types. For example, if you are uh, going to do task management inside of this, you are only going to use the object type tasks and that's when it might be better to use a search query instead of a, instead of a collection. So that is basically how uh, any type works. Now let's jump into the next application and that is Tana. Tana is an outliner application. Uh, the huge issue with uh, this application is that there there is no mobile application yet. It is the least developed out of the uh, note-taking applications. It has a capture uh, app, so you can capture things on the go, but you can't actually access your notes yet. They are saying that it is coming quite soon, um, but they have been saying that for a while now. Uh, as I said, you have... Um, outliner uh, tools inside of here so you can actually take a note and you can uh, add a bullet uh, a bullet note inside of another bullet note i think that makes sense but what's fun about tana is that you can use these super tags right here to turn any uh, like note or node is what they call them inside of tana every bullet point is a node uh, you can turn them into a database uh, like I have done here. What Tana basically does is that using these databases, Tana actually does a search query and finds everything um, regarding that specific tag you are looking for. So it will search through your tags and it will find all of those tags. That is basically... Uh, how the databases work. You have different views inside of this one as well. So you can change the views to either list, table, cards, or calendar, just like you can in any type as well. Uh, and you can add filters again, just like any type. Major difference here, two things. Uh, any type is local first uh, and it stores all of your files locally. Um, and Tana is not. They are working on adding more offline functionality, but that doesn't mean offline first. Um, the second thing is that Tana is an outliner uh, and, and uh, any type is not. And Tana's objects rely on these super tags, so you have to create those objects using super tags. Next up, we have uh, capacities. Capacities is 
probably the most beautiful one. I think this is really well designed, but this is the only application I haven't personally been able to figure out uh, how it works, what is good about it, and just in general, I can't understand this application uh, personally, but that doesn't mean that the application is not good. A lot of people love this application, and after looking at a few videos, I completely understand why. Um, and this also has databases, it also has a graph view, and it also has objects right here, and you can go and create new object types here. Uh, it is a really beautifully designed application. You can add templates here. It also has an AI add-on just like Tana does. Uh, you have the graph view right here. You can click through your different object types and you can decide how you want to view your object types. And just like Tana, it has daily notes, which is a feature I do like uh, both. Um, both as a real journal, so you can journal things and write down your thoughts, but also as an inbox feature. You can jump into your calendar and you can see your days. You can also have multiple spaces here uh, if you wanted to. And you can also add new object types inside of here. Also tags is an object type inside of uh, capacities and you can also tag things. And that is basically the three uh, object-based note-taking applications we do have. However, there is one more coming, uh, and Craft has said that they want to become an object-based note-taking application, uh, and Craft is really beautifully designed, probably the most beautiful note-taking app I have tested out, and they are working on becoming uh, an object-based note-taking app. Uh, we have yet to see how that actually ends up being because the feature is still in beta. So there will uh, be a few months at least, or I think it will be a few months until we will see how objects work inside of Craft. But the major issue with object-based note-taking apps is that, or object-based note-taking in general, is that it is really hard to get into. Uh, so for us PKM nerds, people who spend a lot of time uh, inside of different uh, uh, productivity applications, and there are a lot of us, and we even have our own community, for us it might be a little simpler, but even for someone like me who has spent a lot of time inside of different note-taking apps, this still feels a bit hard to actually use. I am still struggling to figure out how this actually works. And I spent a lot of time inside of every single one of these until I figured out how and why and just everything about the app. Um, so that is the major issue. And the other one is that if I learn something in uh, Tana, I won't necessarily be able to use the same things inside of capacities, or if I learn what a collection and a set is, I can't actually use them inside of Tana. So a set and the databases inside of Tana are quite similar because both of them are search queries, but because they have named them different things, it was hard to understand that they are actually basically the same thing. So there are a couple of things like that. I think uh, Tana is probably... Uh, in the middle, capacities is the easiest to learn, and I think any type actually is the hardest one to learn out of all of these three, but that might just be uh, personal. I actually started off with any type, and uh, all of the applications are really good, but I like any type the most simply because I understand it the most, because I've spent the most amount of time inside of it. But all of them are great options. The only like huge issue I have is that this space of object-based note-taking app, and I'm hoping that Craft can help out with that, that this space actually can uh, figure out how these note-taking applications, these object-based note-taking applications can become a little more approachable, because right now they are not. That was everything for your guide on object-based note-taking app. Let me know if you have any questions, and as usual, I hope to see you again quite soon.